Hi, my name is Norman. Um, you may have noticed this dying plant here in the background. Yeah, we should do something about that, right? Well, I designed and printed a two-piece flower pot. The outer shell is in Amazon Basics uh, translucent red and the inner shell is also Amazon Basics blue, both PLA. And well, this flower pot is supposed to be a self-watering uh, system and here and there there are some uh, very interesting design choices I made let me show you so the outer shell is basically nothing special for some reason the Z seams appeared kind of on random places also here because it's translucent filament uh, actually the reason why I went for it so that later I can see the water level but here in the middle something also very weird happened but I already tested it. It's watertight. I just filled it up to the brim with water and let it in my sink in the kitchen for two or three days. Yeah, in the end it didn't stand in a puddle, so yeah, it's tight, which is great because that's gonna be helpful in, in being a flower pot. <laughs> well, the more interesting piece is actually the, the inner piece. Uh, you can see here already on the inside um, there's a lot going on. One problem is that I wanted to have this lip here so that I can just put them in and then it's going to be flush with um, with the outer piece, right? So I needed a lip and that meant that, well, you can't just print a two or yeah two millimeter lip in the air. So I was more or less forced to print it upside down like so. The problem is that you can't just bridge the entire uh, way here uh, with your 3D printer, or with mine at least. I have the Prusa Mini, and the Prusa Mini does not bridge such a distance here. So we're having something very interesting here on the inside. Number one, we have these uh, built-in supports here. Uh, they, they do nothing except, you know, um, supporting the middle. And then, as you can see here from the pattern, I tried to add layer by layer to more or less control the bridging so that we end up with a shortest bridge possible. I think that's kind of interesting, uh, a very, very interesting design technique. I saw that in uh, somewhere in Thingiverse and um, ever since I wanted to make a project using this design technique. So uh, in case you have a, a large surface to bridge, maybe you can think of, you know, adding 0.2 millimeter increments so that you have like manual bridging. Well, the next thing you see is that I added three slots here. And as you can quite imagine, um, it would be nice to have a little bit more <laughs> holes so that the roots can grow through and, you know, sap that juicy water. Let's throw some holes. Yeah, it could be a little bit larger. Okay, and now comes a special thing which I haven't really tested yet. So usually, um, as I mentioned, the roots can actually grow through them and then hang in the water because we have a little bit of a reservoir here. That's how it's supposed to work naturally, but of course, uh, when you plant in your plant, uh, <laughs> it's not going to um, have enough roots probably to, to hang into the water. So there's a little trick here to help them. I mean, that's what I'm told, and here's how it works. You take string, yarn, whatever. Um, I don't know if you're, you're supposed to take a specific one. I just happen to have this, and then you just um, let it hang into the water, and also into the, your flower pot. I'm, I'm still not sure if that works, but in theory, if the soil is dry, it's going to create sort of a vacuum and then it's possible to suck the water along the yarn into the soil. 
sounds kind of crazy, but uh, basically a candle works the same, but with wax instead of uh, water. And also it has fire. So I'm, I'm not sure if it, it's gonna work right. I mean, that's just a test. Maybe I'm doing everything wrong. Uh, of course, I could just do my research, but um, we're not here for that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's hope it works. Okay, what I read in that one cheesy instructable post, uh, that's like all the research I did in this topic, the, the strings are supposed to go into the soil. So it's not just enough to have them lying on the bottom, but they're also supposed to, you know, go through the soil. So I just added a little layer here on the ground and then we'll insert the plant which is very dry <laughs> and then we're gonna fill up the rest And now um, you can see here that hole. That's how you get the water into the reservoir. I mean, you could just, you know, water it through the soil uh, as a regular person would. But I really wanted to try out this hydroponics thing. That's how it's supposed to work, right? <laughs> I may just have insulted someone who is right into the topic, but that's how I understand it. Basically, uh, even people do that without like earthy soil. They just use pebbles or whatnot. Yeah, let's hope that the watering thing here is not too, too small. And then hopefully, because it's translucent red, right? Uh, you should be able to see the water. Yes, I can see it, great. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera right now because I need to focus on not spilling it everywhere. So I don't know if you can tell on camera, but the water goes until here and the reservoir starts somewhere here. Oh, you can see the water line. Yeah, you can see the water line, great, good news. One thing before we wrap this up, I know I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, this is PLA and people think, you know, because PLA is made out of cornstarch basically, people think it's biodegradable and it's literally going to dissolve in water. That's the reason why people who print flower pots actually don't use PLA. But in my opinion, from my experience also, let me show you here, this is a very, very cool uh, octopus flower pot. This was basically an experiment because it's printed on 0 0.05 millimeter per layer uh, on my Prusa Mini, uh, printed about 40 hours. <laughs> so, no, longer, w was almost a week. So, yeah, took ages. I, I just wanted to try out the limits of the printer and see um, if it could run that long and, you know, if it's worth it. Spoiler alert, it's not worth it, but <laughs> this is a PLA made flower pot and as you can tell, it's not quite dissolved yet. Also, I unfortunately, I don't know where I seen it, but um, I read somewhere that somebody <laughs> tried uh, to biodegrade PLA and even in a compost pile didn't really work, so um, yeah, it's not that environmentally friendly, unfortunately, uh, as somebody might, might tell you. But it also means that it's not going to dissolve here, even though it's with water and soil and bacteria and what whatever is required to dissolve cornstarch. So I'm just going to let that sit here for a while. You can see the water opening is in the front, so that I need to, don't need to turn it all the time. But basically, if you want to have it a little bit more looking like a regular plant, Thing. you can just turn it around. I'm just gonna let that sit here for a while. I'll update you in one of my future videos how it did. Maybe it's gonna be that, maybe not. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed watching this video here and maybe learned something new. So that being said, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.